All right, let's get to it. What did I make with the P9? Um, man, I spent a lot of time looking for cool things, interesting things to cut out, and uh, I hope I've got some good ones for you today. So let's just get right into it. So one of the first things I did was, okay, I got a 10-watt laser. Let's see what I can do with it. So again, half-inch piece of pine. This is 12.56 millimeters, and this is solid pine. And I was easily able to go through this like the other 10-watt lasers that I have tested in the past. Um, it does quite a good job. Again, I'll have all the speeds and feeds on the screen, as I always do. Um, I did bump it up one notch this time and do a 19.4 millimeter, or just shy of three-quarter of an inch, 0.749 inches, close enough. And I was not able to get through this. And it was interesting, and I'll try, I could talk about this for a few minutes, but I'll try to do it quickly. So the first, the first cut I did, and I set it up to where the laser would go outside the material because I wanted to just be able to look at it and see how far it went down instead of having to cut it like I did uh, the last time. So with uh, 15 passes, 100% uh, power, and 500 millimeter speed, I got 15.5 millimeters. And I'm like, okay, well, if I'm that close, I'm sure we can get through this. I did 20 passes, and it went 12.3 millimeters, so less, interesting. The wood grain is completely different on this side. It's more curved up going vertical, um, whereas this is more flat, almost flat, kind of laid down, less layers in the tree on this side than this side. So I'm like, okay, well, this, that's interesting. So uh, I did the same cut again, and it's really, really close to the edge. So as the laser was doing its work, you could see the light shining through the end of the board here. And what I discovered, and this was counterintuitive to me until I saw it with my own eyes, was as the laser is going around, it's low. You see the spot come through low, and then it would go high, and then it would go low again. And what that's doing is the laser beam is running into one of these bands in the structure of the tree, in the fibers of the tree. And so it was putting up a fight. So I tried it two more times. I did the, this, the first one I did was 20, 25, 30. On 30, uh, it was really, really close, but I kind of gave up because I'm like, how many passes? I, I, I kind of ran out of patience, and, and at what point is this feasible for this kind of material? You'll have to decide. Um, for me, that was where I called it. If you're doing stuff like this, that is well within the range and, and, and work duty for a CO2 laser, not an LED-based uh, desktop laser. Um, some simple stuff I did was this really nice little tiger head, and I wanted to kind of see how fine I could get it, so I did it on this piece of um, craft paper tag. And thanks to the good old folks at Banggood, we have a new digital microscope, and we're gonna look at this later on so you can see just how detailed it is. And I'll, I'll have some good shots of that. Um, but it looks it looks great. Again, you know, if I was running a little craft store or something like that, or like a, a clothing, boutique clothing outlet, or, you know, custom gifts, making your own tags is just kind of like that extra touch. And this machine would be great for that, um, as, as a lot of these lasers are. I did kind of another uh, sugar skull, and I think I cooked it a little bit too long on this one because it's kind of dark, but I was really just playing around um, and doing some kind of uh, designations for, you know, doing a, laying, laying the, the tag up there so I could do it. Um, I've already talked about in a different part of the video, I've already talked about this test job that I have available on the website for free. Feel free to download that. Um, I tried doing a QR code, and I don't know if this is going to show up, if you can see through there. Um, yeah, I cooked it a little long and it blew right through the paper. I was doing 300 millimeters a minute, but it was the, the laser power was too much and it blasted holes in it. So I had to tone it back a little bit and was able to get a good mark, a good readable mark, both in the teeny tiny, which looks to be a roughly a half inch square to uh, basically an inch and a quarter square, um, or let's call that 12 millimeters and 30 millimeters-ish. Um, got a good mark. This is just some, uh, it's not really, it's a little bit lighter than cardstock, but some, some heavy craft paper. I did the old favorite, and that's the, this is a test tag, the same craft tag that I did the Tiger with, and it did very good on this. Um, even with it being a cantilevered machine, the lines are nice and straight, they're not scalloped, and the laser really put a hurting on this and blew right through it. Um, you sometimes have the little hanging pieces, but a little flick like that usually knocks them loose, and you can dial in the speeds and feeds or the power, well, the power was 100%, but you can dial in the speed to where the removal of the waste is a little bit easier, and sometimes it falls out. Um, I already showed you the tag, uh, just, just in passing, but the, the standard stainless steel tag test. And another thing that we'll look at with the new microscope from Banggood is going to be this verification of what I've mentioned to you before. These desktop LED-based lasers cannot really impact the surface of this to erode it like a, like a laser in wood where it eats it away. It can't do that to stainless steel, but, but David, there's a mark on there. Again, this is annealing the metal. It's putting a color change into the metal. It's putting heat into the metal. And an awesome discovery using the microscope from Banggood is that I can show you that now. You can actually see where the heat is soaked into the material and it, and it colors out. You can't see it with the naked eye so much, but under mag magnification, it's very obvious what the laser is doing. And I think you'll find that interesting. So we'll look at that here in a minute. Um, funny story, I found a puzzle creation website and I made a puzzle. And here's all the pieces. I don't have it put together. I'll have, I'll have a picture of all the pieces. It's really hard to put the puzzle together when you don't know which side is up. And I didn't paint one side of the board. And sometimes when you're doing the laser work, you get smoke on the top and the bottom of the part. So it was really confusing. Um, so yeah, it, it will cut puzzles. And there are websites, I'll, I'll put a link down below so that they get credit for it, but a free puzzle creation that'll create the file that you need to, to cut it on your laser. So um, that, was, that was fun. I could see people have a lot of fun with that because you could take a, an image that you like, do that job first, and then turn it into a puzzle. And that would be super cool. I probably, I probably should have done that. And that way I would have been able to put it back together. So yeah. So uh, something else is this was a ton of work. I don't remember, it'll be on the screen. I don't remember how long this took, but it was not a short job to do, but I made this this wood fabric. So it's, it, it freed it up. They're all kind of little 
corkscrews of the material and it just turned this plywood into something rather flexible so that was a lot of fun um there's a, some, some people can make uh, hinges out of this material and um it, it just turned out really really good and again back to my earlier comment about a 10 watt laser you're going to appreciate having a 10 watt laser if you're trying to do stuff like this because this takes time so that was cool um I brought back an old one. So I did this I did this design on this piece of slate. This was a requested material uh, from some time ago. And it turned out awesome when I did it. And it was super fast to do. Um, but I, I ended up, well, okay, let me back up. So the first time I did this, I did like a B and there was discoloration on it. And again, you're dealing with a natural material. So you don't know if that's the material talking or if it had grease or something from the manufacturing process on it or oil or somebody had handled it. I had handled it and put fingerprint oil on it or something like that. I don't know. What I ended up doing was hitting this one with some it's a really strong cleaner for like when you're going to powder coat something. Um, and I used it on here, let it evaporate off, and I didn't touch the surface, and I put it on the laser, and the mark came out just gorgeous. And it popped even more um, to kind of add some longevity to this, and that's why it's got kind of a sheen or a shine to it. I don't know if you can see that. But I hit it with two coats of spray lacquer, and it made the slate get super dark, which made the, the laser mark just pop. Um, and it really looks good. I have some microscope shots of this too, so we'll look at that here in a second. All right, so one thing that I always try to do, I'm not always successful, but I always try to bring a new material to bear and let's see what the laser will do to it. We, I almost need to start a series called Mythbusters uh, Desktop Laser Edition, which I may do. And uh, you know, let me know down below if that's something you would like to see. There are things that I have tried that I haven't showed you, and it's, and it's not because I don't want to show you, it's just because I didn't know if you would want to see them. Um, but this was a special request, and I was like, I'm curious, I'll bite. And so this nondescript piece of thermoplastic is Kydex. This is typically used to make sheets for knives, uh, to make gun holsters, all sorts of things. You can heat this up and it'll basically form to whatever mold you put it on. You can pull a vacuum on it and suck it down. And once it cools, you have a, a very a very tough um, container for whatever it is you're trying to do. And so I've never really played with this stuff before. So I shot four holes in it, you can see right there. And some of them are a little bit charred, one of them not so much. And I started like 10 passes and I was basically lighting this stuff on fire. I ultimately found out after trying it four times and getting soot all over my hands that I could do it in two passes and have way less charring, if any, um, actually not much at all, which was good because you don't want that. Um, but it is doable. And now this is black, so that might be that might play differently. That goes back to the black plexiglass uh, tags that they give you. The lasers respond better to a darker color. Um, so maybe maybe I'll do a, a piece of white uh, Kydex or a lighter color Kydex and see if we have the same results and see what the, the cut actually looks like because it might be that it burns it. We just can't see it because it's the black material. So that was an interesting experiment. Now, another thing that I got from Banggood that has facilitated a lot of these tests and made them a little bit easier to do um, is this expanded mesh aluminum, basically laser bed. And so you can't see or smell what I smell, but all the all the sap or soot that comes out of the wood, you know, it can kind of get into this. But this allows the cut to kind of breathe. And what that is, um, and they include this backer piece too, you can see the discoloration on that. And that's after I cleaned it. When you're doing all these laser jobs, um, this gives it the ability to, for the laser to punch all the way through. If you were just using like a metal sheet only at the bottom, uh, you may not get the same effect because that, that metal sheet's gonna be acting as a heat sink and you need the laser heat to do the, to do the work. So this allows the laser to more easily go through the materials that you're working on without any hindrance. These come in all different shapes and sizes, but um, I'll have links to this as well as the microscope that we're going to look at uh, down below. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a huge it's a huge help. It does take up some room because this is roughly an inch tall. Um, but if you've got the real estate to give up under the laser head, this makes a lot of these jobs so much easier. Especially if you're doing something like this and the pieces fall out, then they actually have the ability just to go down in here so that they're not sticking up and getting in the way of the laser head and moving this piece around. So this is very helpful. All right, so let's talk some pros and cons. So uh, on the pro side, it's 10 watts. Um, again, if you're looking at the P9 or the X7 or the X-Tool D1 or whatever machine comes out tomorrow, um, I would highly recommend that you go the 10 watt route. It's gonna give you more capability with the machine. It's gonna allow you to do engravings and certain things faster than a five watt. And um, it might just be an overall more enjoyable experience uh, because you're not waiting so much. So that's the first thing, the 10 watt. Uh, the price of this unit at the time of the fil filming was 599. And to compare it to other 10 watt machines that I have tested, which would be, I think the only one that I've tested is the X-Tool D1 is the other 10 watt and the X7 Pro. Um, you know, the X-Tool D1, as I received it, was somewhere in the $800 range. Now, it came with some other items, and I believe it was on sale at the time, so just know that that's, that's a difference. You know, the big difference between these two are going to be the construction. You have the same capability on the head, but it's going to be the construction. You know, the P9 has a screen, the X-Tool D1 doesn't. You know, different things like that. You just kind of, you just have to decide what features are more important to you. Um, back to the pros. So on the P9, uh, the metal construction. You know, this is this is indicative of all the Atom Stack machines that I've reviewed. They do a great job at construction. Um, those aren't plastic cantilever legs like some machines have, uh, and it's more capable to handle the weight uh, and, and what it's doing. And the fact that it's a heavier machine because of how it's constructed actually helps it stay planted as it's doing its cut. So that's going to potentially lead to better cut quality to a point. If you start whipping this thing around and driving it like you stole it, then you're going to see a lot of deviations in your cut quality or your image quality. So just know that. 
uh, the simple focus. I can't stress this enough. The fact that all I got to do is put down what I'm trying to engrave or cut and throw this little business card size piece on it, use the big fat knob on the front of the laser, drop it down until I hit the focus card, tighten the knob back up, remove the focus card, and I'm done. It's, uh, it's one of the simpler focusing methods that I've seen, and I appreciate that. Uh, this machine does offer offline use. That's not everybody's cup of tea, meaning that you can use the machine without it connected to a computer. So you can create a job and just have it stored on the SD card, and you can just repeat that job over and over again. If you're doing this for production or for like, you know, jobs that you repeat a lot, that could be beneficial. Uh, the touchscreen also, when you're doing those jobs, makes makes setting up and queuing those jobs very easy, uh, and it's easy to look at. It's a good it's a good touchscreen. The fine detail, I did I did double check, and it is a 0 0.08 millimeters by 0 0.08 millimeters on the the dot resolution, and so that's some of the finest that's out there now. Uh, on the laser, back to the laser, laser focusing, the slot that the laser head rides up and in, in, up and down in, uh, when you lock it to, to lock the height, that is a captive track. So it keeps that it keeps that head parallel or perpendicular rather to the work area, and that's important. I've reviewed other machines in the past that they have a screw on one side and a screw on the other, and so there's really no good way to know that you don't have the head cocked to one side or the other unless you get down there and look at it or put a level level, level on it or something like that, which you don't have to do. Um, so this machine, like the just like the XTool D1, it, it constrains the head so it can only go up and down, and that's a plus. Um, an interesting one that I added to the pros was the fact that they have those little riser feet in there, the little stands. Now that's used for construction, but some some uh, forward-thinking person said we could use that for we're also raising it up. So it has an additional feature that allows you to use it to lift the machine up. So you can use a rotary under it, or you can engrave something that's taller. And I think I think that's excellent. I always love when people come up with other ways to use things that you have to have anyway. Um, that, that just makes a lot of sense. So on the cons, uh, the smaller work area, I've already alluded to that. This is 220 by 250, whereas uh, the X7 Pro or the X-Tool D1 or even the A5 Pro, you know, those are all roughly in the 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter range, the X-Tool being slightly bigger than that. But um, if that's not an issue for you and, and you need the portability that this machine affords because it is, you just kind of pick it up and just walk off with it, um, it's, it's, you know, you'll have to decide again, like most of these features, you have to decide what's more important to you. Um, but the caveat to this being a cantilevered style machine is you may not be able to drive it as fast as you want to and maintain quality of your image or your cut. Um, I didn't see anything that was like, oh, I can't deal with that. But just know you're not going to be able to drive a cantilevered machine uh, as fast as you would like a box machine, something like an X-Tool or the X7 Pro or more of those box style machines. So just know that. All right, so that's the review of the Atomstack P9. If you have questions, please leave those down below. And also, if you know of additional materials that we can try, leave those down below as well. Um, as always, I'll have links to everything used in this video down below. I'll also have them on the Neo7CNC.com uh, post about this particular review. You can find more information, more pictures, a little bit more details there as well. Um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I've got some interesting ones coming up, some different things other than laser engravers to talk about. So please be sure to hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.